Arthur C. Clarke said, how inappropriate to call this planet Earth when it is quite clearly ocean. Bathymetry is a way to study the oceans. Bathymetry studies the underwater depth of marine floors and produces the equivalent of a topographical map on land. It was through bathymetry that the Mid-Atlantic Ridge was discovered and hence the mechanism for the theory of continental drift. So bathymetry is crucial to our understanding of our planet. Bathymetry uses sonar that is emitted from a boat or ship. These sound waves travel through the water until they bounce off the bottom and return. A receiver on the boat picks up the returning echo and records it along with the time for the round trip. Since we know the speed of sound through water and the time, the instrument can calculate the distance. Coupled with GPS measurements, the instrument software produces charts, maps, and profiles of the floor. Kane Ivey, a member of the REU Savalbard 2014 team and geology major from Virginia Tech, undertook bathymetric research of the Kronbrin Kongsvegen Glacial Complex in Kongsfjord Savalbard in August 2014. Under the guidance of Dr. Ross Powell and Dr. Julie Brigham Gretty, several REU groups have studied the Kronbrin Kongsfjord Glacial System since 2005 documented its recession and deflation, and the resulting changes to the fjord into which the glaciers calve. This work is important as it reveals the history of the glacier, areas of high sedimentary activity, and how the changing floor of the fjord affects glacial stability. Study and documentation of these changes inform us about other glaciers, the cryosphere, and how Earth is responding to a warming climate. This aerial photo includes the area where Kane conducted his bathymetry. Here is the same area as seen from in the fjord. Kane had his work cut out for him as much of the fjord was choked with ice during the time of his study and getting the measurements required taking a boat with instruments up, down, and across the area being measured in a manner similar to mowing the lawn. This picture shows the location of the terminus of the glacier for the years 1976 to 2014, documenting acceleration of retreat during the last five years. In fact, the area that Kane surveyed has recently become unglaciated and is now part of the fjord. Bathymetric work completed in 2009 revealed a grounding line fan in front of the ice face at a depth of about 40 meters, shown in the middle of this diagram in yellow. This is like an underwater ridge that is the result of accumulation of sediment deposited by subglacial streams that were also documented at that time. Kane resurveyed this area, which now is at a much greater distance from the ice face, and found a depth of 8 meters. This indicates that in addition to observed changes to the glacier, deposition of sediment from the glacier is also rapid and changing the underwater landscape in front of it. Kane also described a new accumulation of sediment next to the southern end of the glacier that has breached the waterline and exists as new ground. Kane, most likely the first human to ever walk this ground, surveyed its area and took samples, noting that it consists of unconsolidated till ranging from coarse sand to large pebbles in size. This diagram shows the transects that Kane completed in blue, along with transects completed in 2005 and 2009. Despite the high concentration of ice, Kane was able to complete a survey of almost the entire portion of the fjord previously glaciated. There are a few areas unsurveyed due to ice, but the clear area within a mass of blue at the bottom is the location of area of land now above the waterline. With his preliminary results, Kane hopes to use his data at Virginia Tech to create a new bathymetric map of the area in front of the fjord. By comparing his work to that completed in previous years, Kane and his team will better understand the dynamics of the Kronbrin Kongsvegen glacial system, ascertain short term behavior, and describe its stability. Thank you, Kane, for sharing your work, and good luck!